Yes. Yeah. Good. Good. All right, we are live, y'all. Welcome again, back, y'all. Once again, and uh, we are going to be talking about what is going on with the CIA. All right, so let's jump into the article here. I don't know why the camera just went blurry. That's kind of like throwing me off a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's a CIA. Sorry. That's the CIA. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> uh, we linked this video down below. Thanks for watching on Rumble. Uh, yeah. We're also streaming from ThemTube, our backup channel. <clears throat> Dare call it a coup. This comes from Mint Press News. A CIA front threatens color revolution in Georgia. Now, the CIA hmm. has been doing this for forever and a day, you know. With the way uh, U.S. imperialism works, they learned everything from the their buddies over at the Anglo-American establishment. Hmm. Um, but uh, oh, let me get back to my article. I done, I done goofed up. Um, CIA front threatens color revolution in Georgia. In the second week of March, thousands took to the streets of. Belize, Georgia, to vent their fiery indignation over a draft law requiring any NGO operating in the country that receives over 20% of its revenue from overseas to register as a foreign agent, violently clashing with police, daubing anti-Russian graffiti on virtually every available vertical surface, chanting mutinous, <laughs> belligerent slogans and prominently displaying the flags of the European Union, Georgia, and Ukraine. Hmm. These widely reported scenes were complemented by a never-ending soundtrack of hostile commentary from EU and U.S. officials, calling upon Georgian parliamentarians to drop the proposal. Notorious war hawk and U.S. aid chief Samantha Power inexplicably Proclaim that the new law gravely threatens Georgia's Euro-Atlantic future and the ability of Georgians to fulfill their own economic, social, and other aspirations. The other hmm. thing it does, it prevents the United States from co-opting their government and stealing all their resources. Really? Like what you're going to watch happen in the Ukraine. Hmm. Georgia's proposed foreign agent laws gravely threaten Georgia's Euro-Atlantic future and the ability for Georgians to fulfill their own economic, social, and other aspirations. I call upon Georgian Parliament to drop these proposed laws. U.S. State Department spokesperson, another deep, uh, deep state plant, Ned Price, menacingly warned any Georgian NP who dared vote for the foreign agent law, they would be personally responsible for potentially jeopardizing Belize's Euro-Atlantic future. Y'all, that'd be just like one of our retarded talking heads in the District of Criminals. Um, what's, what's the analogy? Like, okay, some rando, um, some rando Ukrainian dude. How about uh, Voldemort, whatever it is, Lord Voldemort, the, the little short nudist um comedian guy that's the cia cut out for the president of the ukraine what if he said uh well you can't ban gas stoves in california <laughs> you like uh what's it to you shorty mcshrimp you know what i mean like what do you got to do with anything and why does anything that these you know coadjutor idiots and why anybody would listen to them and they just want to bully people just to just to promote their new world order, one world order agenda. Yep. Um, Washington vehemently opposes the foreign agent law is unsurprising. Hmm. Thousands of organizations, including media outlets and rights groups in Georgia, have received front funding from the National Endowment of Democracy. Really? That's a CIA cutout group that's funded by George Soros and the gang. It's the usual suspects mm. and the regular peoples. It's the same nefarious. And just because Soros is supposedly dead, which he may very, real, very well be dead, the people that he was fronting for hmm. and what they want to do continues to go on. The U.S. Agency for International Development 
which power now incidentally leads over the past three decades. Any reform that would further expose this hardly hidden but little acknowledged or understood fact might raise difficult questions about the independence of these entities and the sinister purposes they serve evermore and that they've been they've been actively involved in these color revolutions in egypt uh europe south america and it's the same losers and we mm-hmm. we handpick these cutouts like voldemort lord mm-hmm. voldemort you know the naked dancing five foot two comedian <laughs> with zero you know and you know he needs a hundred billion so his wife can go on shopping sprees and it's wow. insane, y'all. The, the entire international stage is a really bad night of stand-up comedy Dang. Um, with repackaged nonsense. Uh, that these organizations have a vested interest in keeping their U.S. financing under wraps was amply demonstrated by their pronounced presence at the forefront of the protest in Belize. Many staffers at NED-funded NGOs also took to social media to shriek disapproval for the prospect of having to disclose foreign funding, despite their employers, in some cases, already doing so voluntarily anyway. As luck would have it, right when the thousands gathered outside Belize Parliament building appeared on the verge of storming the building, the Georgian government scrapped the foreign age law. What accounts for the protesters' visceral aversion to having to openly admit their relationship with Ned by law? The endowment was founded in 83 after U.S. intelligence agencies became embroiled in a number of embarrassing, highly public scandals. Then CIA agency chief William Casey was central to its creation. He wished to construct a public mechanism for funding a opposition groups, media outlets, and other anti-government agents, adjutants, overseas that could be weaponized to destabilize and depose enemy governments. Previously, the CIA's exclusive clandestine preserve. The NED represents a highly insidious yet almost entirely overt mechanism with which, at any time it wishes, the U.S. empire can bring foreign governments to heel should they veer even slightly from a Washington-approved path in all matters domestic and foreign, and if necessary, overthrow them outright. Georgia's 2003 Rose Revolution provides a practical, real-world demonstration of how... uh, CIA funds, uh, oh, of how, I'm sorry, I can't read with the proper punctuation, but I did go to the public indoctrination camps, so I will blame the Prussian school system on my inability to read, but I'm working on it. I've been working on it for a while now. CIA funds graffiti artists. Upon launch, the NED quickly set about killing off communism. Oh, thank you. I'm glad they've killed communism Mm. in Eastern Europe, supporting activist movements such as Poland's Solidarity. Yugoslavia nonetheless remained stubbornly impervious to the agency's meddling until the turn of the century. In December of 2000, a Washington Post investigation spelled out an extraordinary detail how a seemingly spontaneous grassroots rebellion that at long last, ousted the country's president, Slobodan Milosevic, two months earlier, was in fact secretly funded and directed by the CIA front. Hmm. U.S. advertising professionals who typically marketed chewing gum and soda pop were engaged to concoct catchy slogans, PR stunts, and other innovative communication approaches to undermine Milosevic. Intent extensive opinion polling and countless focus groups were conducted behind the scenes to road test and perfect campaign strategies in advanced and in real time. Meanwhile, scores of par- parliamentary candidates and activists were covertly coached in the art of staying on message to field journalist questions and effectively re- uh, rebut arguments of Milosevic supporters. 
Uh, extensive training and support were also provided to the Student Activist Collective Optor. This was uh, sub- this is Siberian for resistance. They learned how to organize strikes, communicate publicly via symbols, overcome fear, and undermine government authority through other disruptive, nonviolent means. USAID provided 5,000 cans of spray paint for student activists to daub anti-Milosevic graffiti across the country. But 5,000 cans. Oppor also employed a wide range of sophisticated public relation techniques, included polling, leafleting, and paid advertising on Washington's dime. Hmm. These are our tax dollars hard at work. Hmm. While we while we starve over here, mm-hmm. y'all, these scumbags. All their messaging was informed by U.S. finance polling, too, which meant at every moment we knew what to say to the people, one of the group's activists boasted. Our idea was to use corporate branding in politics. The movement has to have a marketing department. We took Coca-Cola as our model and Optor and Otpor leader revealed in 2005 in all tens of millions of dollars were both overtly and covertly committed to the anti-milosevic push by the cia ned usaid and other u.s government agencies all in just a year at the time the population of what remained of yugoslavia was roughly 10 million meaning several several dollars were in effect Allocated for every citizen, hmm. given the average monthly wage in the country was reportedly less than $30, Whoa. this wellspring went very far indeed, and regime change foot soldiers were easily recruited. Proportionally and in reverse, it would amount to Belgrade spending billions to influence U.S. election. Hmm. Not that that would have been remotely legal or tolerated by Washington, of course. Yeah, because we can just do whatever we want. Yep. Such was, and, you know, we can do whatever we want, and then when other countries get really ticked and like, no, you're not going to do this, then you want to know why yeah. it turns sideways and turns ugly, rather than mm. just minding our own business, right? Such was the surging success and mainstream visibility of Otpor. The group began developing a video game. A force more powerful, players would learn how to oppose dictators, military occupiers, and corrupt rulers using methods that have succeeded in actual conflicts via 12 separate scenarios inspired by recent history. Intended for the use by activists and leaders of nonviolent resistance and opposition movements, it was hoped the media and public alike would more widely be educated in the art of revolution released in and i love how the u.s is just enthralled Mm. and encouraging of international revolutions like the ukraine and lord Voldemort, right but when people talk about a revolution here you know, oh, no. we're all a bunch of domestic terrorists. Yep. That's a very interesting yep. how the fork tongue talk out of both sides of the mouth and spray our money everywhere. Literally. Released in March of 2006 over the intervening years, Optor's rev- Otpor, I keep saying that backwards, Otpor's revolutionary blueprint was repeatedly exported the world over, over courtesy of Ned. The first stop on the international tour was Georgia. Enough is enough. A veteran Soviet, Soviet apparatchik and senior figure of Georgian politics for many decades who had governed the country on and off since the early 70s, Edward, oh boy, Shivar Nadaze hmm, <laughs> was a key reformist figure in the Mikhail Gorbachev government, a foreign minister. He played a significant role in ending the Cold War. Among other things, he ended the war in Afghanistan, greenlit the reunification of Germany, withdrew the Red Army from Europe, and negotiated nuclear arms treaties with the U.S. By contrast, he enjoyed an extremely warm relationship with Western governments. The large-scale privatization he oversaw enriched Americans and European oligarchs. 
while changes to the civil code in 97 opened the door to the creation of thousands of foreign funded NGOs. Hmm. Very quickly, Belisi became among the largest beneficiaries of U.S. financial and military aid anywhere in the world. By the end of the decade, uh, she were on another <laughs> had signed a strategic partnership with NATO and made clear his desire to join the EU. When George Soros visited Belisi to establish a local Open Society Foundation branch in 2000, he was welcomed as Shivar Nadez's personal guest. During his stay, he also met then Georgian Justice Minister Mikhail Savakhshiaki. <laughs> sorry, y'all. Sorry, sorry, anybody of Slavic or Russian descent. I apologize. Yeah. If I offended you, I apologize. In gratitude of elite U.S. universities, including Columbia. Ah, Columbia, the good Jesuit university. Mm where he studied on a State Department-funded scholarship at a Jesuit university. That's interesting. Oh, good. The usual suspects. Not long after the young Salakshalavi Vilil <laughs> <laughs> dramatically quit his post and founded a political party, National Movement, with open society support, existing source funding to opposition media, including TV network Ravasti Rosavi, Rusavi, yeah. Rust Savi, too, also intensified, and so did these outlets' critical output on <laughs> Shivar Nandazi, which took the form both of satirical cartoons featuring a crooked animated president and intensive investigations into state corruption. In hmm. February of 2003, Soros began laying the brickwork for the toppling of Georgia's government decisively, according to the Toronto Globe and Mail. Georgian activist Giga Barokia, founded founder of the NED and Open Society Back Liberty Institute. So here's a third NGO. You got NED, mm -hmm. you got Open Society, and now you have the Liberty Institute. Mm -hmm tongue firmly planted in cheek when you say Liberty Institute mm. was sent to meet with Otpor. Then Otpor representatives were flown to Belize. Do you see how they, they create these terrorist organizations, right? <laughs> and then this, now you know how the Taliban, mm. what are all the names for the Taliban? They were, oh my goodness. the Taliban and then there was Al-Qaeda and then al Qaeda mm. and then there was like four or five and it was all the yeah. same dudes. Yeah. And most of them were white, okay? And most of them were not Arabic, okay? Mm. It was all Blackwater stuff, y'all. Uh, <clears throat> okay, where they taught thousands how to peacefully overthrow Shavar Nadazi and form a revolutionary group of their own known as Kamara. That's Georgian for enough. Like, oh, you mean like tax enough already? You mean like huh. the Tea Party? Hmm. Yeah, that was co-opted, wasn't it? Yeah, that worked out. Yeah, they're not taxing us anymore, nah. thanks to the Tea Party. Where are yep. those guys at? It borrowed heavily from Oppor's branding and messaging. Sizable Ned and Open Society funding flowed instantly. This cash injection helped Kamara develop a variety of campaign products and strategies in the lead-up to Georgia's November 2003 election. Hmm. Y'all, this was 20 years ago. Are you, are you listening? 20 years ago. In the 10 days before the vote, Rustavi II repeatedly broadcasting Bringing Down a Dictator, a U.S. Docu documentary on the overthrow of Milosevic. Most important was the film. A National Movement representative later remarked, all the demonstrators knew the tactics of the revolution in Belgrade by heart because they showed the film. Everyone knew what to do. Hmm. This was a copy of that revolution, only louder. The election was ostensibly won by a coalition of pro Shevar Nazdi parties. Immediately, and according to some reports, before voting was even over, exit polling commissioned by the NED began to circulate, suggesting the official result was fraudulent. Hmm. And opposition had, in fact, clearly <laughs> won. 
hmm. wow, this sounds like a really bad story that yeah. I've heard somewhere before. Hmm. That 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 would never that happen them here. Too, yeah, that could never possibly it would happen, never happen in America. In this democratic never. bulwark, never. And it's also something that it's verboten to even consider because obviously it couldn't happen. Yeah, it could never happen. So it certainly couldn't happen over there. No, I mean, no, never. Of course not. Never. Scores of anti-government activists from across the country duly descended upon Polisi's parliament building, ferried on buses paid for by Kamara. Outside loudspeakers and a cinema screen were erected to broadcast <laughs> Rostavi II, the most prominent... Disseminator of the NED, counterpolling and footage of the young protest leaders at work. Nationwide demonstrations led by Kamara raged for weeks, culminating on November 23rd with activists storming parliament, brandishing roses. The very next day, Shivard Nazdi resigned. A hmm. terribly disappointing revolution. Uh... Sakava Shivalali being resident. Oh, sorry. <laughs> In January of 04, over the next decade, he further liberalized Georgia's economy and sped up the privatization of remaining state industries, led wide ranging anti corruption efforts, and increased defense spending to a staggering 9.2 of the GDP. U.S. officials, as well as groups such as Transparency International, and the World Bank. Oh, wow. That's weird. Hmm. This was a bank grab, huh? Hmm. This was a banker's war and a banker's revolution. No way. And World Bank was involved. That's interesting. They hailed Savarakiraki Shashi for making Georgia one of the easiest countries to do business and growing the economy by 70% from uh, 2003 to 2013, a period in which per capita income roughly tripled. Yet, even the U.S. Empire's in house journal, Foreign Policy, had conceded the results of the Rose Revolution were terribly disappointing. Far reaching change never really materialized, and elite corruption still continued apace. Oh, apparently, they didn't get what they want. <laughs> By the time Sayak, I'm going to try it, Sayakash Vili, Vili, yeah. Left office, poverty in Georgia had only marginally declined, and roughly a quarter of the population still lived below the absolute poverty rate. What's more, the country was no less authoritarian nor more democratic. In fact, his rule was dictatorial in many ways that Shavar Nadazi was not. This always happens with these puppet regimes, mm. and you never know the next psycho that they're going to try to, this always mm. happens. You know, this is the problem with governments in general. This is the beast and the beast system, and these are yep. the workers of the beast. For example, he replaced super presidential institutions with even more highly concentrated hyper presidential mechanisms, granting him unilateral power. Well, that sounds familiar too. Using mm. this authority, Savakash Vili attempted to ban political parties opposed to his policy agenda among many autocratic maneuvers. Hmm. More gravely questions about more gravely questions about also abound also about his involvement in several suspicious deaths, such as Prime Minister Zarub Giovanni. He is known to have directed Georgia's security service to assassinate rivals such as hmm. oligarch Badri, Badri P. I'm just going to call him Badri P. All right, y'all. And at his behest, prisons became politicized <laughs> hotbeds of torture and rape. The country's inmate population quadrupled during his tenure to 250,000, which is still a drop in the bucket compared to one of our the United States prison planet federal oh dear we're so incarcerated y'all more per capita than any other European state while they really did democratize them huh made them just <laughs> like America despite Savak Shalili's best efforts to rig the October 12th election efforts that were actively assisted by Ned he lost power and a coalition led by Georgian Dream 
was govern the country. Georgian dream. Georgian dream. Okay. Domestic critics, including endowment-funded Shame Network, which was among the vanguard of the recent uprising and overseas supporters of what used to be Kiev, it's now Kiev because we live in a postmodern world, accused the party of being pro-Kremlin. Oh, it's got to be Russia, 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 bad guy. Yeah. In reality, though, the Georgian dream has always struck a delicate balancing act between strengthening Western ties, pushing for EU and NATO membership, and maintaining civil coexistence with Moscow. Hmm. This has become even harder to preserve in the wake of Russia's invasion of Ukraine with Western pressure on Belisi to improve sanctions on its far larger, richer, and more powerful neighbor, one of the country's biggest trading partners by far, and to send arms to Kiev, constantly mounting. Kiev. It's still Kiev, y'all. It's not Kiev all of a sudden. Wait, what, were they trying to change something? From... Well, they straight up changed it. And really? all of a sudden, everybody's like, Kiev, Kiev, Kiev. And it used to be Kiev. Hmm. But now it's Kiev, Kiev, Kiev. Cause we, Weird. Because you know, that's postmodern. That's how you do it. Whack. The government was so far refrained from either, although strives to comply with U.S. and European sanction regimes and has condemned the invasion of the U.N. In December of 22, Prime Minister Arakli Garbazabaja, oh, why do you do this to me? Yes. Yeah, we'll just call him Arakli G, claimed he had been repeatedly asked to open a second front since February, of 20, since February 24 that year by Kiev. And his refusal was not warmly greeted. All-out conflict is understandably something Belisi wishes to avoid, not least due to the brutal routing it suffered in August 2008's Russo-Georgian War, which began with <laughs> Sayakshkavali with U.S. encouragement, began striking civilian positions in Abak. Abakazi and South Ossetia. Despite lasting just five days, as many as 200,000 were displaced and hundreds mm. were killed. One wow. can only speculate whether Georgian Dream specifically pursued the foreign agent law in order to prevent the NED sponsored installation of a government more amiable to opening a second front and imposing yeah. sanctions on Russia. Dare call it a coup? To put it mildly, the fingerprints of the NED and U.S. aid were plastered all over Ukraine's February 2014 maiden coup. At every stage of the revolution, individuals and organizations funded by both entities featured prominently two years prior to Ole Rybachuk who ran several U.S. aid-funded opposition groups for years in the lead-up to Maiden, made his insurrectionary intentions very clear, saying that the Orange Revolution in Kiev a decade prior, we want to do that again, and we think we will. In May of 2014, George Soros told CNN his Open Society Foundation had played an important role in events relating to Maiden, <laughs> the Dark Lord Emperor. However, temporarily, temporary media reports on Maiden either ignored the ambiguous U.S. role in fomenting it or dismissed the proposition as Russian disinformation. Mm -hmm. Russia, Russia, Russia. Or Bad conspiracy theory. Yeah. Huh. Who invented that conspiracy theory mm. word? I think it was the CIA. Ever since the conflict mm. in Ukraine began, Western journals have become even more aggressive in rejecting all suggestions. The upheaval was anything other than an overwhelmingly, if not universally, Popular public revolt. Yeah, we want our country destroyed and our infrastructure destroyed. And we want 95% civilian collateral damage. Mm. Yay for the freedoms. We want the freedoms. Just like the Americans. They want the freedoms. Mainstream reports boasting of Washington's role in the overthrow of Milosevic 
Shivan Randaze et al. have apparently been memory hold. Hmm. Hmm. This mass amnesia may be attributable to an increasing level of hostility towards the NED and U.S. aid the world over and moves by governments, particularly those with which Washington, and when I say Washington, I mean the district of criminals, not the state. Somebody, some Washingtonian got very upset. They don't like it when you say Washington, even though, where are they closing all the Walmarts? Is that in? Uh, that was, I, that was Portland. Portland. I'm sorry. Portland. I do get Washington uh, and Portland are interchangeable. Yeah. Sorry. They are. They're both like Washington, Pacific Oregon. Northwest, nah. blue haired liberal yeah. people. Sorry. Sorry. Y'all, that, I sorry. wouldn't live there. But yeah. If I offended you, I apologize. Yeah. Where was the, I? The country's pretty up there. If you're out in the country, it is beautiful. Out in the country, the country's beautiful. But Unfortunately, not the gross cities. The psychology up yeah. there has ruined yeah, the scenery. Sad, sadly. Um, so this was like a uh, obviously a popular public revolt. Hmm. Mainstream reports boasting of Washington's role in the overthrow of Milosevic. Okay, our, yeah, this yeah, mass yeah. amnesia may be attributed to increasing level of hostility towards NED and USAID. The world over moves governments, particularly okay, to restrict or outright ban them. The reality of their raison oh d'etre and modus operandi. Oh man, they're dropping French on me, y'all. Uh, has somebody's going to do the same right? Has resultantly <laughs> not only become unsayable, but most be but must be vehemently denied by Western journalists. After all, admitting what enemy state leaders say is true is not done. Representatively, a July 2015 Guardian report on Moscow's prescription of the NED under its foreign agent laws quite amazingly relied on a brief quote pulled from the organization's own website to describe its operations. By contrast, in November of 2004, the same outlet published an extensive account how that year's orange revolution in Ukraine was wholly orchestrated by the endowment and USAID. Hmm. Completely orchestrated. In the modern day, allegations of foreign interference and politically charged unrest overseas are almost invariably countered in the mainstream by appeals to protesters' agency and legitimate grievances. What about our agency and our legitimate grievances mm. against this beast, diabolical, international cabal with a puppet diaper pooping talking head that can barely utter a sentence in the context of the incendiary sequence but let's vote hey 2024 vote harder don't forget because because poopy pants okay <coughs> wow in the context yeah oh yeah i oh i have a memory oh, that's scary it, they want you to have the cognitive ability of sloppy joe and i think you literally do. if you go out to vote i think that's yeah. In the context Sadly. of the incendiary sequence that recently played out in Belize, such entreaties ring entirely hollow. It is completely inconceivable such righteous concern over a comparatively trivial regulatory amendment in direct keeping with the condemnations and pronouncements of U.S. officials stirred organically. For now, though, the regime change cost, the regime change coast is clear again. The protest seemingly a mere warning shot that the government capitulated so readily surely reflects its cognizance of the dire risk of an outright revolution breaking out, courtesy of Ned sponsored assets on the ground. If its arm had been not if its arm had not been twisted while the empire has been placated, though. That threat has not gone anywhere. It will remain a daily ex uh, existential hazard as long as Ned operates in Belize. Hmm. So there you go, y'all. Now, I read it so you don't have to. There you go. And I, I s tried to properly pronounce all those ridiculously hard words, and I'm sure that it, it made many people very... <laughs> upset but uh dr mentioned the 
uh, Brandon Fetterman, and we do have a uh, we do have a Biderman Fetterman 2024 T-shirt if you so wish to purchase one on our website. Um, but that's the article for yeah. today. This is a value for value proposition. So if you appreciate what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, please go over to the texasboys.com check us out yeah um, purchase some really good high quality products we got for, some from our family yeah. your family we got some unvaccinated honey and also we sell we now have our one gallon honeys back one in gallons stock back again in stocks so you can buy in bulk and our native mushroom brew and our coffee line go check it out Texas boys dot com and it's kind of a win-win because you're supporting our local community and our small um farmers that live around here and then our local coffee roasters and then you're supporting the show um that we do for y'all so it's the best it's just a win-win-win so yeah yes we have bees but um you know, since our we, volume is our volume too high is so to... much, so we went ahead and just partnered up with another local, really local uh, bee farmer. And our bees are working overtime right dude, now. Dude, they're working we incredible. Have peaches, peaches, yeah. peaches. So we and got pears. the last, the last yeah. freeze here. Uh, there's plum sets on the plum trees. Really, lots of peach sets on the wow, peach trees. Wow, that's awesome. Some pear sets. Yeah. What's the Venn diagram? That's one of our T-shirts. I'm glad you asked. So you have your dystopian novels, and here you are, right here in the middle. So, oh man! And if you wear it with this hat, it's a great <laughs> color clash. I mean, it's just it is. You it's look a like a popsicle microcosm. That's what it I looks do. like. I look you like do. one of those. One of what those. Were, what were what were one of those? Yeah, um, you unwrap it. Red, white, and blue popsicles. Yeah, red, white, and blue, and they were different flavors. You know, the red would be different, and the blue would be different. The white would. Those were pretty good. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. All right, y'all. Thanks for hanging out. All right. We appreciate See y'all later. See you on the next All video. Right, bye-bye. Bye.